My dearly beloved in Christ, today's gospel tells us of a man who owned a farm and had his servants plant wheat in the field. But while men were asleep, his enemy came and sowed weeds, or as this version says, cockle, among the wheat. And they didn't know about it until, of course, the grain grew up. And then the weeds appeared as well. Now this gospel has a number of applications. We can apply it, for example, to the church. The field would be the church. In fact, our Lord said the kingdom of heaven is like to a field that is planted. And our Lord often used that terminology, the kingdom of heaven, for his church. And God has planted in the field of his church the gospel, the teachings our Lord gave and that are taught by Holy Mother Church in his name down through the centuries. But the enemy, the devil, has sowed weeds among the wheat. And that would be applicable to all the heresies down through the history of the church. All of the false teachings that have led men astray. So this would be one application of the gospel. But we also could apply it to our soul. That the field is like the soul and God plants the good seed through spiritual reading, sermons, reading the gospels, epistles and gospels at mass, the inspirations we receive. All of these are like the good seed that is planted in the soul. And if this good seed germinates, it brings forth virtue, virtuous practices. But the enemy never sleeps. In fact, notice that in the gospel, he sows the weeds while at nighttime, while everyone is asleep. And that reminds us that the devil never takes a day off. He never ceases to tempt us to try and sow weeds among the wheat and temptations and so forth. Now, what does our Lord say? What did he say to his apostles in the Garden of Gethsemane when they were tempted, when they were discouraged, when they fell asleep while he was in his agony? He said, watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. So watchfulness, another term we use is vigilance. And then prayer. The two means our Lord gives us, or the two remedies for the various temptations of the devil. We have to be watchful. We have to be aware that the devil's always working. He's always going to be tempting us. And then we turn to prayer. Now, I would like to read a couple of sections from uh, the sermons of St. John Riviani. And this first one concerns the fact that we don't need the devil to tempt us to have temptations because we have our fallen human nature. And it's always going to be there. It is always going to be a source of temptation and something that pulls us away from Almighty God. But in addition, of course, the devil tempts us. So this is what St. John Vianney says in that regard. My dear brethren, in everything that we see, in everything that we hear, in all we say and do, we are conscious of the fact that we are drawn towards evil. If we are at table, there is sensuality and gluttony and intemperance. If we take a few min moments of recreation, there are the dangers of flightiness and idle chatter. If we are at work, most of the time it is self-interest or avarice or envy which influences us, or even vanity. When we pray, there is negligence, distraction, distaste, and boredom. If we are in pain or any trouble, there are complaints and murmurings. When we are doing well and are prosperous, pride, self-love, contempt for our neighbor take hold of us. Our hearts swell with pride, when we are praised, wrongs inflame us into rages. There you see, my dear brethren, the things which make the greatest of the saints tremble. This was what made so many of them retire into the deserts to live solitary lives. This was the source of so many tears, of so many prayers, of so many penances. 
It is true that the saints who were hidden away in the forests were not exempt from temptations, but they were far removed from so much bad example as that which surrounds us continually and which is the cause of so many souls being lost. And so notice where he says that these hermits that went to retire from the world, they escaped the world, but he acknowledges they were not free from all temptation because they had their fallen human nature and because, again, the devil continues to tempt. So it's the devil sowing this, the weeds in the field. He's constantly doing so. Plus we have, again, our fallen human nature. Now we can also apply this to the importance of parents being vigilant in the lives of their children. They must constantly be aware that their children come into this world with a fallen human nature, a strong attraction to evil, and that the devil never ceases to tempt. So listen to some words of St. John Vianney in this regard. You will tell me that you cannot be always following them around. We have other things to do. Them meaning children. So the previous sermon was on parents being vigilant with regards to their children and disciplining them and forming them and so forth. He says, you will tell me you cannot be always following them around. As to that, my dear brethren, I will say nothing. All I know is that you will answer for their souls as much as for your own. But, you will say, we do all we can. I do not know whether you do all you can, but this much I do know. If your children incur damnation at home with you, you too will be damned. That much I know and nothing else. So pretty strong, but he's talking about, again, the the duty, the responsibility of parents having that vigilance. We have to be vigilant ourselves because, again, the devil is trying constantly to sow his weeds to sow the temptations, but parents also, and very importantly for their children, to remove them from occasions of sin, to give them good counsels, to be vigilant, and to do all you can to form them so that they will have the strength to say no to temptation. So this is the warfare that we are all involved in every day. We celebrate today the feast of a great saint, St. Martin of Tours, who lived way back in the early centuries in France. And we were reading yesterday that he is called the Apostle of Gaul because at that time, even though many people had already been baptized, there were still so many pagan practices. And you've heard the story of how he was a catechumen and he came across, and he was a soldier, and one day he came across a poor man begging who was shivering with cold. And having nothing else to give him, he... (coughs) He took his cloak and took his sword and cut it in two and gave half of it to the poor man. Now that might not seem much, but the Roman soldiers had good heavy cloaks. So at least it was something to give to this poor man. And then our Lord appeared to him that night with the angels. And our Lord said to the angels, our Lord was clothed with the half of a cloak that Martin had given that beggar. And our Lord said to the angels, Martin, although still a catechumen, gave this to me. So that decided him then and there to be baptized as soon as possible, to cease the lessons he was going through because he already knew them well enough and to obtain baptism. But he went on to become a very holy bishop and gives us a good example of charity in that regard, but also constantly being vigilant. He was called the Apostle of Gaul because he so so totally transformed the area of France where he lived, where there still had been pagan influences, and he went and tore down the altars to the pagan gods and so forth, even at the risk of his life. Such was his zeal for the, the people. So let us be vigilant. Let us never forget that the devil is always trying to sow his weeds, always trying to sow his temptations. And we can never be completely free from that. But we can be vigilant, be watchful, and by prayer overcome the temptations of the devil. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.